If you have a brand new Mac that's running Apple Silicon and you're experiencing audio dropouts or Ableton seems to skip a beat every so often, you can't replicate it, it just tends to happen. Uh, I wanna share in this video why it's happening and share three things you can do to fix it. Now, in order to understand why it's happening, we have to understand what's different about these computers. So that I'm gonna turn to people a lot smarter than I am. Essentially, the way these brand new Macs are created is they have two different types of cores, performance cores and efficiency cores. And those performance cores are meant to handle tasks that are very processor intensive, uh, things that will take a lot from our computer. And when we're not doing those types of things, uh, we're gonna switch and use those efficiency cores. And so the problem that you're experiencing that's happening is when you're using Ableton Live, it's, it's likely running audio in uh, the performance core, and then it gets to a certain point and it wants to switch to the efficiency core, and that's when your audio drops or skips a beat. So let's talk about how to fix that. Let's go into Ableton Live. We're gonna go to Preferences, uh, which is Command Comma is our shortcut to get there, and we're gonna go to the Audio tab, uh, tab here. And the fix for this is uh, doing the opposite of what I've told people to do in the past. So you wanna go to the Latency section where it says Buffer Size here, and you wanna drop your buffer size to be something lower than 512. So you could start with 256. If you're not running a lot of plugins in your set, uh, you may even be able to get down all the way to 32 samples. If you start to hear your audio sounds kind of like it's bit crushed or uh, uh, it sounds almost distorted, then you want to raise it just a little bit. But the key here is making sure that we choose a buffer size smaller than 512. Now here's why that fixes it. Essentially by lowering our buffer size, we're making our CPU work more and we're going to keep able to running on the performance core. Now, if you're 512 or higher, then at some point in the process of running audio, Ableton uh, is, is running audio fine and the computer goes, hey, uh, we're just gonna switch them over to the efficiency core. And during that switch, that's when you hear your audio drop. Now, that's a little backwards based on what I've told people in the past, because typically I say, hey, if you have audio issues, if your audio is dropping, skipping, then you need to raise your buffer size. But because of the current setup on these Macs, the way Ableton is coded currently on these Macs, we wanna drop our buffer size. Now, that's not the only thing I would encourage you to do. The other thing, second thing I would encourage you to do to solve issues is make sure that you have updated to the newest version of Ableton Live. And in this case, the newest version of Ableton Live is Live 11.1. And the reason you need to update to that is that version is uh, particularly developed for Apple Silicon. Uh, I had found a bug early on in uh, Live 11 on Apple Silicon with drum racks and nested drum racks uh, where my buffer size, uh, my CPU would go super, super high, my audio would drop different issue than the issue we're talking about here. So to make sure you've solved uh, any of those other issues, make sure you've updated to Live 11.1. And the third thing I would encourage you to do is look at what you're using in your set. If you're using any external VSTs, AU plugins, Max for Live devices, make sure that those are updated uh, and are compatible with M1 Max. That's something I see people get into quite often where they update their computer, their computer runs perfectly fine, uh, they update Ableton Live that's supposed to work with that uh, version of their OS. Everything's perfectly fine, but they keep having issues and it's because they have plugins that are not updated and supported on M1. And as a final kind of bonus tip here, make sure your hardware is compatible as well too. If you're running audio interfaces and they use something other than just core audio drivers, standard drivers, uh, then make sure that they are updated and compatible with M1. And the best way to do that is reach out to each company to their support channel and just say, hey, I wanna check, is, is, is your interface is your MIDI controller is your whatever uh, compatible with M1 and they will make sure to let you know. So I hope this fixes your issue. If you use Ableton Live often, and particularly if you use Ableton Live to perform on stage, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post new content. And I do that every single day at 10 a.m. Central. So hopefully you'll find some good nuggets, some helpful tips like this video uh, that will help you in the future. But thanks so much for watching this one. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.